Last night's experience has convinced me I'm gonna go ahead and waterproof this. I don't want to have to titivate too much with this thing, so I'm just head down cracking on right now. I'm not sure how much of an easy setup this is uh, at night time, and I don't think I want to find out just yet until I've used it for many more occasions. So I'm being, being a bit quick about my movements. Follow the lines of the seam. You know, the equipment is essentially telling you where to place your, uh, your pegs. The benefit of the skirt is to just give us the height, the, that just that extra little bit of space inside. That if this had been a grade three, it would have come down a bit further by a few more inches, but it's just a little grade one. But it was in such good condition for something of its age and its shape that I felt it pertinent to ask to have this increased. Okay, so unfortunately, bit of drama, I've left a peg, um, one peg short, so I'm gonna have to quickly manufacture or fabricate one from the woodland around me. Don't leave home unless you've counted out all your pegs and you've got enough pegs to do the job. That'll do. I've got some, some funky hazel which may just work for me. Doing these things under duress and under time pressures isn't exactly what coming to spend time in the woods is all about for me, but I've put myself in this position so I now need to rely on my skill set to make this happen quickly. Hence I'm in the overhand grip with a knife turned so I can pull off more powerful pieces faster and bring this to a point. I've now just chamfered the top off so it's easier to strike with another stick or improvised hammer and drive this into the deck a bit further. This will probably do me. In the absence of a hammer right now, I'm gonna have to improvise again and either turn this over and do my stop cut like this. So it is absolutely essential as you are only ever as sharp as your knife and you would have seen there without the, even a hammer, all I did was turn it over and drive that down, that uh, you can then fabricate things from the natural world as long as you have a good clean sharp knife. It won't let you down. Okay so all I've got to do is just eat out enough that my cordage or whatever it is I'm tying will bite in on there, that's perfect, that gets me out of a hole. Luckily these are adjustable, Ta -da! gets me out of, a, out of a jam. And now for the $50,000 question, does the, f the luxury of a fishing camp bed fit end to end inside here? Let's find out. At Hidden Valley Bushcraft, we use an array of high-end fishing beds, okay, to ensure that our boys and girls coming on courses get that feeling of going to sleep underneath the tarpaulin, going to bed as part of the woodland. This is one of our, the oldest models. We only have one of these left, and I've chosen it because it's 20 centimetres shorter than our other ones. This one is 180. I don't know whether it's going to fit. I'm looking forward to finding out. If it doesn't, I'm on the floor. It's had a few repairs. Ooh. Would you look at that, people? That is not bad. So that, in a nutshell, means my, my legs aren't touching the end quite, um, and my head isn't touching the canvas. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to bridge between me and the canvas. But I want to be able to fully, oh, just, and I think that's because I've had the bell tent skirt effect added. It gives me, affords me that little bit more room to be able to put my, my comfy bed in here. So we've got a little fire on now. And as that's starting to heat up and establish, now might be the time to quickly show you guys around the lava inside. I've very kindly managed to borrow some lighting from the production team. 
Ugh, so I can actually give you a good demonstration of what's going on inside here right now. Got the fishing bed set up. I put down this heavy canvas ground sheet. My kit's off to the right hand side. And I've, the orientation of the bag is such that the drinking tube goes straight in my mouth at night time. If I want to drink, I can lean over and get that. All just good common sense. And when it's time for me to turn in, I'll just do the zip down and that'll be me for the night. It's been really, really nice to get out here to spend a night overnight in this little lavu before I go as far as taking little Finley for his first night out or his first ever proper camping experience. Remember guys, he's not even three years of age. You can give a child a 70 inch plasma TV screen and ask them when they're 30, whether they remember the first time they watched TV on a 70 inch plasma TV screen, unlikely. But what they'll always, always remember is the first time they went camping, the first time they made a fire. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with my little boy. It's been raining pretty consistently now for a few hours and as you can see the mighty lava is not letting any water by. in here this morning. It stopped raining. Thank God. So last night we had some pretty heavy rain and this has held up fantastically. To the best of my knowledge all my clothes and everything is still dry. The knob fell off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a coffee on and I'll give you some more thoughts. It's the morning after and I'm about to double, triple check my fire is out after it being rained on for six hours and then I'm going to leave no trace. So we're going to take a quick whiz round this thing and what I'm looking for is signs where water ingress has perhaps got in um, and you can see this is an example where I've pinched it earlier today you can see it's held its form there I've pinched the canvas and shaken it uh, when I woke up this morning you can see in touching it what I've done is I've, I've pushed the moisture into the canvas okay so here around the area of the buttons on the back side you can see where water water has been taken in around the area of the thread on the buttons. That's not a great big problem. I didn't get wet inside, so that's fine. That's obviously where the heat of my head was last night. <laughs> pushing, pushing out heat, my head was pretty close to the, um, to the canvas, so nothing's, nothing, nothing's but none of these water droplets have been able to go in because my, my, the heat of my head is coming out. Although saying that, there's something there. I'm going to get some spray that uh, will impregnate into the canvas and just help it out a little bit more. All right, let's check the peg as well. Ta-da! Bomb proof. So this did its job. This was my improvised peg that we made last night. I actually am going to go as far as to say, in the future, I'm going to make up a really lovely set of handmade wooden pegs for the simple benefit that you get from having this slightly higher up from a bigger stonky chonky peg driven in there I can get the extra height off the floor as opposed to having it pinned down here and that just helps the skirt to do its thing that bit more if I had that the whole way round I probably would have had even better form out of this so uh, I'm going to go and do that and it, it really fits that retro old school camping vibe that we're going for when we're using the Lavu Pegs. 
always one lurking. Right, now, get my little peg out, comes undone. Taking the excess off. Now this will probably need to be dried out at the house. When we get back. Taking half the woodland with you for authenticity to prove to everyone you've actually slept in it. Give it to there and begin to roll. Just shove this down into a little bit more. 